The Sleeping Beauty, Chapter 5 So the worst was averted, but the fate of the poor little princess was still terrible enough, and it was only to be expected that the king should do his best to prevent the prophecy from coming to fulfillment. The first thing he did was to summon all the magicians of his own and neighboring countries, promising a rich reward to the one who could show him a way to defeat the old fairy's malice. The magicians came in scores, some with long beards reaching to their feet, some without any beards at all, some with bald heads, and some with matted hair that looked as though it had not been combed for centuries. For days there were so many magicians about the palace that they were commoner than cats, and it was impossible to enter any room without surprising one or the other of them, sitting in deep reflection and looking as wise as only a magician can look. But nothing came of their thinking and one after the other they gave up the task and departed, having first asked for their traveling expenses. At last there came a wizard who was wiser and more venerable than all the rest, and when he heard what was required of him, he said he would go home and consult his secret books, which contained the magic lore of all the ages, and which had been written by the greatest of all the magicians, Merlin himself. Home then he went to his cell, which was in a rocky cliff, on the side of a mountain, and having uttered the word of power which unlocked the massive door, he entered and prepared to begin his researches. Now the books of magic lore which Merlin had written were in many volumes, and everything in them was set down in alphabetical order, so that it could be found easily. The old wizard therefore turned, first of all, to the word princess. Five hundred pages were devoted to this subject, and truly there was a great deal of very interesting information, as thus. Princess, how to, perform, how to transform Goose Girl into. Spell for causing a princess to be surrounded with high walls of bronze, which may by no means be broken down except by the notes of a certain trumpet. QV. Now QV are the first letters of two magic words, which are to be found in all dictionaries and encyclopedias to this day. Princess, enchanted ring for, a new and improved method by which she may be changed into a fawn together with any members of her family according to desire, and all of them transformed back again into their proper shape. Princess, an excellent device for causing a princess to grow tall or short by eating of a mushroom, which directions, with directions how to find the place where the mushroom grows, and precautions to be taken, lest by overmuch nibbling she disappear altogether and so on. But there was never a word about how to prevent a princess from falling into a charmed sleep through pricking her finger with the spindle of a spinning wheel. So, when he had read all through the five hundred pages, the venerable wizard turned to the word sleep in the hope that he would meet with a better fortune. And there was much reliable information under this heading also. There were recipes for potent drugs which would cause sleep and for still more potent drugs which would prevent people from going to sleep. And when the wizard came at last to this last, he cried out eagerly, for he thought he had succeeded in his quest, until he read on and discovered that the spell described was only for use on wicked queens who had shamefully ill-used their stepchildren. It is very easy to make a mistake by magic, for it is a most complicated science. By the time he had read through the two hundred pages devoted to the word sleep, the venerable wizard was very uneasy, but he was a persevering person, and he did not abandon his endeavors. Merlin's wise books having failed him, he cast about for other means to learn what he desired, and consulted his oracle. Now his oracle was a stuffed crocodile hanging from the ceiling, and a voice came from it which told him to repeat the magic formula. The magic formula is a sentence made up of all the sounds that are left out of ordinary speech and it is a fearsome thing to listen to. It is also very exhausting to say, and after the venerable wizard had repeated it, he was obliged to rest for several hours. Thus, he rose again and drew pentagons on the rocky floor of his cave and crossed triangles and circles bordered with all the signs of the zodiac. And he stood in the middle of the pentagons and crossed triangles and circles and went through all sorts of strange and secret rites, but all to no purpose. But still, he would not give up trying, and he went to mysterious places in the woods and gathered strange herbs in the dark of the moon. And returning home, he cast the herbs into a brazier, 
and they burnt with flames of many colors, giving out clouds of dense smoke and a most horrible smell. Then, as these exercises did not bring him the result he desired, he gazed into crystal and poured ink into the palm of his hand, and did all the other things that he had learnt to do in all the years since he was apprenticed to magic as a very small boy. And just as he was going to give up the quest in despair, a thought came into his head, and he cried aloud for joy, for he knew he had discovered what he sought. This shows how even the most difficult things may be attained by perseverance and patience. At the top of his speed, he hastened back to the palace and asked an audience of the king. This was immediately granted, for to tell the truth, the king was awaiting his return with considerable anxiety. Well, said he, have you succeeded in finding a way? I have, answered the venerable wizard. My arts have not failed me. And he handed the king a piece of parchment on which were written the following words in Latin to make them look more important, but very likely it was not good Latin, for the venerable wizard had been apprenticed to his trade at an early age, and in consequence his classical education had been somewhat neglected. But this was the meaning of them. Shall spindle prick, then spindle burn, no thread weave, and no wheel turn. If there is no spindle, and there is no wheel, then no finger the spindle can feel. The king slapped his thigh for joy. Why, of course, he said. How is it I did not myself think of such a simple solution? It seems to me, wizard, that you have easily earned your thousand crowns. Ah, majesty. The wizard made answer. All things are simple when, when once you know them. And in this, he was quite right. And that's the end of chapter.